Um. Uh, Joe, I don't know. Piggy's marked a w as a way. So would oh, you like okay. me to introduce you or do you want to just start your yeah. school? Oh, Piggy's Wait. back. You just missed my brilliant introduction. I was so busy worrying about the recording, I forgot to talk. You're not talk. I am so sorry. I want to say welcome to all of you, and I'm so glad that you could be here to join us tonight with our fabulous presenter, Joe Freitag, and she's going to be sharing with us about persona dolls dressed for learning. Joe is the guru of all things related to gifted education, and I know you're going to love what she has to share um, in this session. She operates the information service, Gifted Resources, and maintains the Gifted Resources website. She's also the author of the Sprite Site blog, Personas, Profiles, and Portraits blog, and the Gifted Resource blog. So you can see she's got lots of uh, fingers in the fire, so to speak, for many things related to gifted. She has worked as a librarian in both public and school libraries, and she home educated two of her children at the secondary level. And she loves to write, blog, and create with arts and crafts. So with that, I would like to move on and say a big thank you to our sponsors and supporters. We're so appreciative of the support that we've been given so that we can offer these free virtual conferences around the world. So thanks to Adult Learning Australia, the Australia E-Series, uh, Broadband for Seniors, the Learning Revolution, which is Steve Hargadon's project, and Blackboard Collaborate. We so appreciate their support. And we do want to take just a moment to ask you to please grab one of those smiley faces or globes down in the lower left corner and click and drag it onto the map. And I know that that's not possible for people on iPads, but you can sure type it in the chat. So let us know in the chat where you're located. I'm located in Phoenix, Arizona where it is now 10 p.m. on Friday night. Thank you. We love seeing those smiley faces across the globe. And now I'm going to turn the mic over to Jo for her presentation on Persona Dolls. Thank you, Jo, for presenting for us. Thank you very much indeed for the lovely introduction, Peggy. and. Um, and thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Um, yes, um, persona dolls dressed for learning. Now, first of all, um, I would like to find out who's in here. Um, are you a teacher, a techie person, um, a parent, um, an administrator, maybe? Are you on Twitter? And if so, would you like to share your Twitter handle with us? And um, would you like to um, put comments or um, whatever on the whiteboard, either using the um, A text label, um, the plain one without the lines, or using the pen stroke one, which is just above that. Um, and 
if you're not able to do this, you could put it all into the into the chat window. That would be lovely. Um, a quick word that it might be a, a good thing to save all the whiteboard slides um, from file, save, whiteboard, because there's quite a number of links coming up. Um, Peggy is going to be uh, very kind and put them into the chat for you. And I've put most of them onto the um, the slides also. Oh, this is this is wonderful. I'm seeing all these um, all these des descriptions of who you all are and what your um, your Twitter handle is. Uh, this is excellent. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, but um, if you see a question coming up. Um, Peggy, could you, or Anne, could you, um, you know, alert me to that, please? Thank you very much. Okay. So, you notice one of them there. We've got interested in, um, you know, do you uh, have a specific interest in a certain area of education or um, Are you are you dreaming of empathy and world peace? Because that's a large part of what we're going to be talking about now. So persona dolls. They're dolls, usually quite large, um, and um, we've just been given the the link by Peggy in the chat um, to probably the best site about persona dolls. They're used chiefly in the UK and also in South Africa, um, a bit in Australia but not as much as those other places. Um, and they're usually quite large, uh, the size of a small child. And they can be used in many ways to tell stories and um, generate awareness and understanding and empathy for people of different uh, different backgrounds and lifestyles. Um, they usually are used in early primary or you know kindergarten education, and they are often um, treated as a guest person who comes in to the um, the classroom and sits on the teacher's lap. They're not exactly like the dolls that are in the doll play corner and they're not like puppets and not like ventriloquist dolls. Ah, somebody says I own one persona doll. Excellent. Um, who said that? Oh, Peggy. Oh, lovely. Um, can you tell us what your doll is? Do you want to tell us via the microphone? Sure. I, <laughs> I just don't get, it's a little boy that looks like he's standing in the corner. He does not <laughs> have a face, but he has a baseball cap that's on backwards, blue jeans and a little t-shirt, and he's just a spunky little guy. Thank you. Yes, yeah, actually, I have one who's very similar to that, who I'll introduce you to a bit later on. Um, these dolls come and they sit on the teacher's lap and they whisper in her ear and she narrates what the doll's telling her to the children and she gets the children to talk to the doll. Um, she starts off usually by talking about things that they have in common. Um, they're dolls with a personality. They have a name, a family, a history, things they like and do not like. They have a home. Um, they have a complete student file so that if um, 
Well, everybody will be telling the same story about that particular doll. If there are several teachers um, all working with that doll, they will all be telling the same story. And they might speak one or two languages. They have their favourite foods and they have some foods that they don't like at all or don't eat at all or their culture says they're not allowed to eat at all. Um, and they enjoy and do well at some things and don't enjoy or are not good at doing other things. So they have a complete personality um, and a whole backstory. And moving along, um, they can be used in education, in play therapy, in professional development. Um, they can be used to create empathy or as part of storytelling or just purely for entertainment. Now, I've put some links here to some of the blog posts that I've written on my blog. Um, and the, the top one is called Refugee Zoom Beanies and Persona Dolls. And that was all about um, how Persona Dolls could be used to maybe help children understand about refugees who are coming into their school. Um, and in the same way that the Zoom Beanies um, computer game could be used for the same purpose and how they can be used in play therapy. Um, and then there's one whole blog post about storytelling and how that can be used in that way. And one, the one called What Next is what else could I be doing with these persona dolls because I can see all sorts of possibilities. Um, okay, do you use them like big puppets and talk with them? Well, yes, but they're not like puppets in that you don't put on a voice for them. You don't ever hear the persona doll speak. It just whispers to the teacher and then the teacher relays what the, what the doll has said. Um, so they can support the educator um, in addressing challenging issues like anger and conflicts and sadness. Um, but usually they have built up a rapport with the doll before any of these issues start to be discussed. They'll emphasize the things that they have in common with the doll first of all. You know, they'll talk about um, holidays and uh, places they like to go and things they like to do and they'll, yes, the children do love talking with the dolls and very often they will talk to the dolls when they won't talk to people. Um, and they'll feel quite comfortable about it. These are really young children. Um, well, kindergarten age, um, you know, sort of four, five, six, you know, that sort of age. Um, and um, when they've built up the rapport with the with the doll and talked about things they have in common, etc., then they can talk about these other um, experiences. You know, for instance being left out of the game or somebody calling them, you know, unpleasant names or whatever. Um, all these other issues can then be discussed later on. Um, some of the teachers let the children play with the dolls, some of them don't. Some of them treat them um, like a, a guest who comes maybe once a week and talks to them and it's a sort of a guest appearance, a regular type thing. Others do let them play with them, but they have to make sure that they're respecting the doll, not throwing it around wildly or anything like this. So it has to be, um, they have to be respecting it in the same way as they would be respecting a real person. Um, and so, you know, some, some teachers do it one way and some do it another way. 
Uh, but they do help the children to acknowledge uniqueness and special needs and to respect and value their own group identity as, as this kindergarten group or um, this group of people who live here or whatever. Um, it helps them to expand their knowledge of their own and other children's family cultures um, and then they can experience empathy and solidarity and they can develop problem solving strategies and say well you know um, Megan the doll is having all these different problems at the moment and you know what can we do about that and they can make decisions together and take responsibility in the face of unfair behaviour so once the doll has talked to them all about the problems they're having, when they see this same situation arising then they feel empowered to speak up and, um, and voice that that is unfair or whatever. Uh, it helps them to develop dialogue and, com and negotiation skills and um, develop a culture of community and dialogue so that everybody's happy to talk to everybody else and uh, talk in a respectful way. So here we have um, a page full of links about persona dolls and how they get used um, and there are some really good ones there. The PowerPoint um, number three down that is a really helpful one. It explains to you exactly how they're used and um, gives you examples of it. It's very well done. And this is all important because this whole conference has been about working in a global situation and um, we have Cultural Diversity Week coming up in Victoria um, in March from the 12th to the 20th and yes they, they'd be wonderful for Cultural Diversity Week um, and f here from the Multicultural Vic website we have um, in Victoria more than 46% of our population are either born overseas or have at least one parent born overseas. Victorians come from over 200 countries speak 260 different languages and dialects and follow 135 different faiths. During Cultural Diversity Week, community and cultural groups host hundreds of festivals and events across the state to celebrate Victoria's cultural, linguistic and religious diversity. Um, and so that's a really exciting thing. Um, and there are a number of excellent resources for schools to use so that they can participate in Cultural Diversity Week and in amongst that week there's also the United Nations International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, um, Harmony Day on the 21st of March and there are resources there um, for teaching about that as well. So we're going to be talking about the clothes for these persona dolls. Um, clothes can be used to illustrate the nationality or ethnicity. ethnicity. <laughs> um, the cultural period or setting, the religion they are, uh, their character or occupation, their lifestyles and customs, dress style preferences, and analogies for other characteristics. Now my persona dolls all look a bit like Westerners. Um, I purposely haven't given, yes, like the name Harmony Resources, yes. Um, I purposely haven't given my dolls um, a cultural or ethnic or religious background, they just have the plain face um, because mine 
are mostly illustrating gifted students and I'm going to talk about that a bit later. Um, and one of my daughters said, but they still all look like Westerners mum because of the way they're dressed. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's so true. Um, so I was talking to a lovely friend who's uh, been absolutely wonderful with this whole persona doll um, interest. She's been supplying me with materials to make the dolls and etc. Uh, she has a wonderful collection of dolls from around the world. It was her mother's collection and she has it in a glass cabinet. And so she sent me a number of her photos. Um, here are some of Judy's collection of dolls. And oh, I can imagine wonderful ways of using them in education to talk about different um, ways of dressing around the world. And so that's one. And there's another, another page of her her dolls. Um, and another one. And another one. I love these little Japanese <laughs> ladies. And again. And then they can also illustrate different historical settings. These ones of Judy's are not very big at all. They're mm, a few a few inches high. Um, mm, six inches maybe? Um, I don't know. Um, and they're they're in several on several shelves, yes, they're five to seven years, somewhere there. They're um, they're in a glass cabinet um, with a mirror behind um, and there are several shelves of them in the cabinet but my dolls are larger than that. They're, they stand almost three feet tall um, and you'll see some of them in a minute. Here are some more historical setting ones. These are little characters from Cryo Castle showing the medieval ones and a porcelain doll. Um, uh, then they can also illustrate uh, different religions. Now we've only got um, the Christian faith being represented here but um, the link there takes you to a place called um, Articles of Faith and they have a whole collection of persona dolls from different faiths, a Jewish one, um, a Muslim one, etc. Um, so that, that's very a very useful link I think. And they can tell you about the person's Occupation or character. We've got the the Pearly Kings and the and the London Bobby here, and the Canadian Mountie, and the Australian Swaggy. And then they can also uh, I've got some more this here that illustrate character or occupation, and these are some of my dolls. Uh, we've got the little florist and the little tradie. Um, and they were ones that I made um, for different members of the family for Christmas presents. So the, these ones stand about three feet tall. Yes, excellent props to tell a story. That's right. And so clothes can illustrate the customs and lifestyle. Um, here we have a group of American Indians and they're all doing the things that they do, going hunting and, and fishing and food gathering. Um, uh, 
or it can just simply illustrate the style of dress that they prefer. Here are a couple of Barbie dolls and, um, and a couple dressed up in... I think of them as as Canadians. Judy said she wasn't really sure, but um, you know, that it could be just illustrating preference for warm clothing. Uh, and it can illustrate an analogies for other characteristics. But um, I need to talk about that a little bit later. So I've got the memory elephant who's a character from my blog who's going to remind me later about this. And so my persona dolls um, don't illustrate any specific country like Judy's ones did do. Um, mine all represent um, different types of gifted and talented students. And um, there's a list of some webinars that I've given about them there, links to those. Um, this was how I began doing this. Um, I was approached by one teacher who had to make a persona doll that represented a gifted student um, and she was sent to me to get some information about gifted students um, and she gave me a great long list of questions <laughs> all about which holidays we celebrated and, and which um, food was the favourite etc and so after I'd spoken to her, um, yes, um, very hard to generalise. Um, I spoke to her supervisor and I said, well, the thing is gifted and talented students come from every different religious, ethnic, uh, social, etc. background. Um, so... <laughs> Um, I don't quite know how to answer this. And she said, oh, don't you worry about that. Let her give her doll its own personality and you just give her the information about giftedness. And so I answered as many of the questions as I could and I came to the one at the bottom which was, please could you ask all these questions to your youngest child so that I can have a child's voice about all this. <laughs> and our youngest child at the time was in his late twenties. Um, so I, I said, um, I don't have a, a child with the right age group, but I do have a cartoon character who is a twice exceptional student. She's gifted and she has some sort of learning disability uh, which isn't exactly specified as well. Um, and I will answer these other questions from her point of view. Um, so I did. And then I thought, well, I would like to make one myself too um, to represent my sprite character. And um, so I started looking into that and that's, that's how I got started. Um, and also in March, as well as Diversity Day and Harmony, you know, Diversity Week and Harmony Day, we have Gifted Awareness Week in Australia. This is the second time we will have had this. Um, and there's a link there which tells you about all the different activities and events that will be going on to celebrate that. So the important thing about gifted students is that all students deserve an excellent education, but gifted students need an appropriate education. Uh, they need to have an education that's appropriate in the level, pace, depth and breadth. Um, and quite often they're very different from uh, their age peers, their needs are quite different. Um, 
and it's not elitist to give them what they need because all students deserve an excellent and appropriate education. So, so then I started to make one gifted doll <laughs> and uh, when did you say yes all kids yes yes all kids need an appropriate education yes but what's appropriate for gifted students is not the same as necessarily as what's appropriate for the others um, you know for the whole class um, because they may be yes that's right um, they may be starting from a point which is a few years ahead of the class. They may have an understanding of of the work that's going to be presented already, um, and they may have understood that for a couple of years already. Um, and it may not be quite. It may not be right across the board. It may be one subject, or it may be. Ah, thank you very much indeed. Peggy has managed to put that link into the. Um, chat for you. I couldn't get it to <laughs> to be live on the slide. Uh, that is a link to Nia Hart and Betts revised profiles of the gifted and talented. And they talk about six different types of gifted student. And after I'd made one persona doll, um, Things sort of snowballed, and I ended up making a whole set. And so on the left here we have Miranda, uh, and Miranda is the successful student. She's the one that most teachers would think of as being the gifted one. She's the one who gets the A triple plus, and she's compliant and helpful, and um, and she does tend to stay in her own comfort zone. She likes to get her A triple plus and she may not be prepared to take risks to go beyond that. Uh, beside her we have Michaela. Michaela is the creative student. Um, she's the one who has a very different outlook and a very very different um, original thinking. Oh okay. Um, uh, maybe why I'm having problems. Um, okay. Um, I'll see what I can do to um, to find that. Um, yes. <laughs> um, and Michaela is the creative one. She's the one who has original ideas. Um, and does all those wonderful creative things that we heard talked about earlier on in a, one of the sessions today. Um, teachers may find themselves um, ending up in a, in a bit of a, a struggle with her because she tends to have very different ideas. And just because they're different doesn't necessarily mean they're wrong, but um, <laughs> she may be on quite a different um, wavelength to everybody else. Um, beside her, with the pink hat, um, we have Felicity. And Felicity is the underground gifted student. She's the one, um, well, my Felicity's background story is that she comes from a culture where the girls are not usually educated and uh, so she knows she can do well but she um, well she doesn't want to offend anybody from her her own background um, and she sort of just doesn't want to be noticed. She's she's hidden in the background. She needs somebody there to come alongside her, and um, particularly if if she can have somebody who is from her background who can um, 
help her. Um, yeah, that's that's Felicity. Um, beside Felicity, we have Vincent. Vince. He's the at-risk student, and that's because he has got into the local graffiti gang. He's quite often not at school. Um, when he is at school, he's writing things like "Vincent was here" and "Poor all" and things on the on the wall. Um, and um, Vincent needs he needs a, a mentor. He needs somebody to um, to look after him. He'll probably need extensive counselling and um, social work care, etc. Um, beside Vincent, we have Sprite, the twice exceptional one, um, and I'll talk a bit more about her later. And on the far right, we have Edward, the autonomous learner. Edward learns things at his own rate, in his own time. Um, he may have very different interests from the rest of the class, um, and he learns very effectively when he's um, learning himself, doing his own research and following up things that he's interested in. Um, he may not be very easy to teach, um, but that's what we we would hope that eventually all the students will be autonomous lifelong learners and be able to find information for themselves. Um, and Edward's a good example of that. Um, George Betts also um, has the autonomous learner model. Um, that's another another one of his um, his works that he's given us. So then there are a few other characters um, from my persona dolls. We have. Um, on the left here we have Sally. Um, Sally is an example of a student who comes from a, a poor background. You know, she's, her family are living in poverty, um, and so we need to make sure that that's not going to limit the possibilities that she has. Uh, next to Sally, we have Adam, and beside him, Evelyn. Adam and Evelyn are the country kids, and there again, we don't want them to miss out on opportunities because they're living out in the country. Um, and we've had some wonderful examples during this conference about ways that um, country kids can participate. It's much easier now than it ever was in the past. Um, we had the excellent one about the, the drama um, program which was shared between a number of, of rural schools. Um, and that would be just the thing that would be absolutely excellent for Adam and Evelyn. And on the far right we have Leona. She's another creative one. Um, I did use them, these, these dolls, uh, for a, um, a mentor program, professional development, and one of the children was called Michaela, so I <laughs> I changed to the owner for that one. <laughs> yes, yes, technology has given country kids access to people across their country and the world. Yes, and and Merchant does some wonderful global projects. Um, with her school, which is a, a rural school. Now I've got a, a, a slide here about faces. Um, the first of these dolls that I made, Sprite Doll Number One, did have an embroidered face. Um, sprite Doll Number Two, by this time I was making a whole set of them, and the other ones had foam heads, and so I made another Sprite Doll because. The second sprite doll, well, the first sprite doll was not in the same scale um, as the other ones and was quite different in a lot of ways. So I made a second one. 
um, but I purposely didn't give them any facial features so that they could represent their type of giftedness without showing any particular racial or ethnic characteristics. Uh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, so thank you very much, Memory Elephant. The other thing that um, clothes can be used to illustrate, oh, do they, do they always have a gender? Um, yeah, now that's really interesting. Um, uh, they do, <laughs> um, but I think they could probably, you know, I mean, I, I can imagine um, a possible use for them illustrate, illustrating tra transgender issues, for instance. Um, but one of the things that they do say on the, um, the Persona doll websites is, you know, make sure you have boy dolls as well as girl ones because you know, you don't want the boys to think, oh, that's just a girl thing. Um, they're supposed to represent people, <laughs> you know, rather than um, being a doll plaything type affair. Mm. Um, okay, so the memory elephant has done its job. Memory elephants are great. Um, and we need to think about what else. Um, uh, clothes can illustrate. And what about hats? <laughs> Does anyone want to have a guess of what analogy <laughs> hats could be? <laughs> yep. And, uh, and No? Okay. What about the Bono Six Thinking Hats? Ah, now, and have I got any with hijabs, etc.? Um, no, I don't. I would love to have one, and um, possibly I might be able to get one from um, the Articles of Faith website that I told you about, or um, one of my daughters said she might be able to get me some um, other clothes, you know, for my dolls, uh, because the children said, oh, they, they all look like Westerners, Mum, you know, <laughs> even though they look a bit, bit different, they, they don't really, um, you know, they still all do look like Westerners. Um, yeah, so the hats could easily represent the Bono six, six thinking hats. Um, yeah, yes. Now that's interesting too, Anne, because I think uh, I don't know about this, but I'm wondering whether there are maybe even some cultures that wouldn't use dolls at all. I'm wondering whether there are some that would say that this wasn't an appropriate thing to do, and that's something I'm going to follow up on. Hmm. And that that's um <laughs> okay, I'll I'll let you know if I find out. Um that was something that came up um yes. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, that was something that, that sort of came to the fore this morning when they were talking about um, being culturally sensitive and um, things being appropriate in some... Oh, thank you very much, Peggy. You've put the the De Bono Six Thinking Hats link up. Um, the things that are appropriate in some 
uh, cultures and are just not and how we really need to know about these things before we start um, trying to communicate and particularly um, go to a deeper level of communication with other countries. Um, yeah. So De Bono six section, six thinking hats and then shoes. What do you think the, the shoes might be representing? The shoes. Um, the shoes um, <laughs> can illustrate De Bono's six action shoes. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, now, do you know about De Bono's six action shoes? Um, most people have met the hats, but Quite often, people haven't. Um, what great, great cultural answers to that question, Joe. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. The, uh, I like this um, comment from Shambles about shoes um, could indicate about wealth or climate. Yeah, well, most people know about Devono's six thinking hats, but he also has six action shoes. So it's up there for thinking and it's down there for acting. Um, they have, he has six different types of shoes. Oh, thank you very much. That's, that's a big help. About 95% are Muslims. And dolls are given to very young children for play. Oh, that is good to know. Thank you very much. Um, De Bono six action shoes. The blue formal navy shoes. Uh, um, they represent actions um, which um, represent routines and formal procedures like in order to land a plane, we must do this, 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 and this in that order, strictly. Um, grey sneakers represent the actions of exploration and investigation and gathering evidence. And the brown brogues um, represent doing what's most sensible and most pragmatic and practical because the brown brogues are for, you know, walking and um, doing and being comfortable while you do it. The orange gum boots represent emergency actions where safety is a prime concern, like firemen's. <laughs> yes, yes, the shoe thing is very Western. <laughs> um, and the pink slippers represent care and compassion it's the colour of the shoe that's significant. No, both, both the um, both this um, both the colour and the type of the shoe are significant. Um, where are the sandals? That's a really good question. Um, I use. I'll tell you how I use these in a minute, and I'll tell you what I use sandals for. Um, the um, pink slippers represent actions that are to do with care and compassion and attention to human feelings, etc. And the purple riding boots represent actions to do with leadership and command and authority. Um, it suggests that the person is saying, we will do this because I'm... <laughs> Bet Joe talks about socks next. Well, um, I will talk about socks in a moment. <laughs> um, the, um, uh, the 
people writing that uh, actions that are taken because a person in authority says that they should be um, should be done that way. Now, I use them slightly differently, um, and there are some webinars that I have um, given about this, these topics. Um, oh, well, a, a quick um, day to back to the socks. Um, one very interesting thing is that very, very often uh, gifted students um, very often have a lot of sensitivities. And one of those is um, they don't like things that are itchy, like a woolen jumper or tags on, on their clothing or um, seams on their socks. Um, our youngest son was late every morning to school because um, before we started homeschooling him, <laughs> because he couldn't get the seams of his socks to line up, and, <laughs> and he would have the shoes on and off dozens of times and, and fret about it, and we'd end up arriving late yet again. Uh, anyway, back back to the shoes now. Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes, it would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, if you um, if you put some of the prawn curry into the <laughs> into the soup, we can all share that. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, the Bono six action shoes. I use them slightly differently, as can be imagined. Um, I have assigned the sort of programs for gifted students that would be created if you used each of the different types of shoes. And on this page, um, there are links to a number of blog posts that I wrote about this. Um, the orange gum boots are emergency measures. So in terms of programming for gifted students, that would be, oh dear, this child's gifted. What are we going to do with this child? Oh, we'll make the child the teacher's helper for the time being. <laughs> yes, which shoes did Gandhi own? Yes, none of the above. <laughs> um, the pink slippers represent um, programs which um, demonstrate care, etc. So they would be study skills ones. They would be remedial programs. Um, they would be um, oh um, counselling and um, and all those care type subjects. They <laughs> In my way of thinking about it, most of the Pink Slipper programs don't actually have any teaching content, but they're support programs and they're the sort of thing that will keep the child hanging in there and, and um, it could be, could be just the thing that keeps them, keeps them going. Um, the grey sneakers, they represent um, Exploration and fact finding, and um, you know, library visits, etc. Um, project work, um, passion based, and um, projects, uh, etc. And you can build some wonderful projects and programs for gifted students using the grey sneakers. The blue formal shoes. Yes. Okay. Um, oh goodness. Right. Um, I won't go into all of that um, right now. I'll just leave you with the link so that you can look at that yourself, and I'll show you that there are some more pages 
of links, um, particularly ones for um, Harmony Day and Cultural Diversity Week, and uh, for Teaching Peace and the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre. And I'll say, do you have any comments or questions? And please stay in touch. <laughs> And I'll hand it back over to um, Peggy or Anne now. Wow. <laughs> we have a lot of resources to explore. And that is so wonderful because it really takes some time to dig down and, and learn about each of those dolls. And there's just so much thought that has gone into them. So thank you so much for sharing it. And I um, want to thank all of you for joining us. And do remember uh, to log out of the session and then go straight to the next session with Bron Stuckey, um, because I'm sure that will be an awesome session, too. And um, this recording will be posted soon. So um, you can look for it on the recording link on the uh, conference website. So thanks to all of you. <laughs>